Hello everybody, Volin here in Pursuit of Art. This is the third video in the series of rendering planar forms. So what I'm going to do this week is we're going to go from the image on the right to the image on the left. So what we're going to be doing is putting those gradations in there. As you can see, the values have been blocked in. You can see the process for that in the previous two videos, along with the entire rendering process from scratch to finish in the second video. For this one, what we're going to do is just go over gradations. So this is probably the hardest part of getting values to read properly is to get those correct subtle gradations in there that give you realism. My setup for the file so far is that we have each and every one of those shapes on its own layer and it's locked. So all that we have to do to finish up is that we just need to put those gradations in there. So for instance, if we have a look at this object, any single surface that you see is going to have a gradation. It's going to have a very subtle value transition. And that really translates in your brain to realism. There's no surface anywhere in the world that wouldn't have some sort of subtle gradation occurring. So that's what we need to do today. So we're going to start with the ground plane first. And at the moment, just looking at it, it looks a little bit too bright. So I'm going to reduce the brightness. I'm calling up my levels. So control L to get your levels up. And I'm just going to move this bottom slider over and get it a little bit darker. So this is a bit closer to the general overall value that I see for the ground plane. Next, again, this is on its own layer, so it's locked. I'm going to get a pretty big brush. So I'm hoping Camtasia doesn't do something stupid on me again. So a really big soft brush, nothing really special about it. All I have turned on is just pen pressure for the transfer and for the size. So that means that my brush responds to pressure by giving me a little bit more or less tone and it also changes shape. So my first mission here is to try and get those big tonal transitions in there. So just observing this corner here, I can kind of almost see this is where the light begins to affect the form more. So the light source at this particular image is somewhere above and to the left of this object. So over here is where the light sort of starts to spill over, hit the object. So I need to darken that, that um, far edge a little bit more, put in the cast shadow over here. So this is where the object blocks that light coming over. And this is going to be our darkest part of the image here. And there's also no bounce light coming from any other object. So this is where my darkest darks occur. So I'm not going to spend too much time on this because I don't want to inflate the video too much. This is going to be a sort of more rough version of this, but I'm trying to get as close as possible to the reference, to the image on the left. So the ground plane is pretty much reading. The only thing that's missing is just the cast shadow over here. This is probably going to be a bit problematic, so I'm going to make my life easier by just making a new layer. And I'm just going to try and get that cast shadow in there. Why I'm doing it on its own layer is because I can just erase from it easier. So I'm working with black right now. Opacity is faded so i use the number keys from one to zero on the top of your keyboard you can see over here if i press five i get 50 percent if i press three i get 30. so i'm just working with the opacity almost all the time so i'll be changing this very very often when i need a bit more tone from each brush stroke or when i need a bit less so this is getting closer and closer i need to get a bit of darkness over here just so it doesn't cut off so suddenly so just getting a bit more tone and this will be roughly it for the ground plane. It could use a little bit of lightning just next to the object so it looks like it's sitting on the ground more. So I'm just gonna darken it a little bit over here and lighten right next to it just subtly. Okay, zooming out. That'll roughly be it for the ground plane. Again, just spending a bit more time on it would make it better, but for the purposes of this demo and keeping the video shorter, we're going to move along now. So this area is done. The ground plane is done. Now the first shape that's affected by the ground plane is this one right next to the actual ground plane. So this is angled downwards and it's picking up the cast shadow. There's not a lot of bounce light going up here. So I've picked a base tone. I've picked a base value for this plane that is pretty much, it's actually a little bit lighter than it needs to be. So I'm going to have to just darken up almost the entire surface. So I'm using, again, the soft brush. That's the only brush that I'm going to be using. It's really large as well. So I'm using a very large soft brush and that allows me to have a very subtle gradation. So with very few strokes, it only just needs a couple 
a couple of hits really to just get that value. I'm gonna darken it closest to where it connects, where where it's tangent to the actual ground plane. I'm gonna darken it there most because there's just very little reflected light there. I'm gonna give it a little bit of lightness over here. I think I might be over darkening it a little bit. Probably just hit it with just a tiny little bit of lightness, very low opacity. So I'm gonna lower this and then just give it a little bit. Moving on to the next plane, this one, and comparing it to the reference, it's got a little bit of gradation that is just receiving a little bit more light on the top parts and it's gradually fading as it's going down. So the light source is weakening. So I need to just get a little bit of darkness on the bottom side and a little bit on the side and I can actually lighten this area just a tiny little bit to just emphasize that. Next we're going to tackle this one, just making sure I'm on the right, right layer. And what I need to do with it is I need to brighten it a tiny little bit. Again, where the light source is hitting it more directly and it's falling off here on its bottom part. So just altering between lighter and darker tones and just putting that in there. I could choose to emphasize this a little bit, so leave it a little bit lighter maybe than it should be, just so because in the reference here, you can't really see how they're separated. I'm gonna try and separate them a bit more in my study. This shape, take the dark value again, opacity at about 10%. I'm gonna leave this on for you guys so you can see when I'm changing. And be aware of the things I'm not saying. I said this in the first video, but whenever I'm doing a video or whenever you're watching a course by someone else, let's say, be aware of the things that the person actually isn't saying. So you might be struggling with something that I'm completely missing at the moment. I might not be thinking about it at all. So if you're finding that I'm actually doing something that you're not sure what it is and I'm actually doing it, just pay attention to that and see if you can figure it out just by watching me do what it is that I'm doing. I'm gonna darken this central plane a little bit because I wanna separate it more. So I'm gonna darken it and I'm gonna darken the lower bit even more just so it, it reads better against this other plane. So my point being is just pay attention to the things I'm not saying and the best thing that you could do to make sure that I say it is send me a comment and let me know what it is you struggle with so then I can make videos that are custom to you so they help you more with your problems because chances are if you're having a problem probably at least another million people are having that same problem so it will really be helpful to a lot of people not just you and not just to me but it'll actually be helpful to people if you said what you might be struggling with now for this plane that I'm doing right now at the moment the best strategy for it would be to actually have that lightness put in there first so what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna almost restart because as I was speaking, I was a little bit distracted. So I'm gonna over lighten it a little bit. I'm gonna over brighten it. Then I'm gonna pick that dark value. Why I'm gonna do that is because it's lighter in the center. So, and there's, it's sort of sandwiched between two dark areas. So if I put in the light first, then I can just cut into it with a dark shape from the top and a dark shape from the bottom. If I first put in the darkness and then just try and lighten it up in the center, I might sort of be shooting myself in the foot because if I make a mistake with the light tone, there's no way for me to sort of blend it back in smoothly. In other words, it's probably harder to cut with one shape and still retain those um, good value separations between the other two. This bottom shape here, this bottom dark shadow is a more precise shape so it's got more of hard edge to it so it'll probably need a bit more precision so I'm not gonna rely that this light shape when I'm putting it in I'm gonna be able to chisel that out I'm actually just gonna put the light first and then just put that darkness over top of it hopefully when I do it it's gonna make a little bit more sense so this is the light tone at the moment and it might be a little bit over brightened but I can just dial that down as I'm putting it the dark tone so you can see as I put in some of that darkness it's beginning to look a little bit too bright so I'm just gonna hit it a few more times and then I'm gonna go and I'm gonna do this bottom part here where you see this is actually artifacting from the 3d program but just for the study we're gonna try and replicate that just for fun so I'm gonna grab a I'm gonna look for a more textury brush something with a bit more of an edge 
So this may do. So I'm looking for any brush that's kind of ir irregular. As you can see, I just picked the first one really that I kind of found, so it doesn't really matter. Just trying to get in there. I'm not going to refine it too much. Again, it's just an artifact. It's not really important. So just working on that now. Looking at the entire shape, it is a little bit too bright. So I'm going to return to my soft brush now and just hit it one more time. This is my actual soft brush. Hit it one more time. The entire shape with just a little bit of dark and it's going to darken the entire thing. So when you're working with opacity turned on like that, if you use a dark tone, so if I use black, it's just going to darken that entire area. So just a few dabs, trying to not lose my bounce light over there. I'm actually going to leave it like that, just so it's a little bit more overemphasized. But it's just for the purpose of the study, I'm showing that that bounce light has been observed. Next plane is this one. Uh, it's pretty much the base value is the light value. So all I need to do is, again, as with the other ones, just add in a little bit of darkness. A little bit of shade. So using the nice big soft brush, it allows me to have those really subtle transitions without having to go backwards and forwards a lot. I'm going to redo this. So sometimes it's easier to start over than to try and finesse something in there. So just going closer to the edge first with a smaller brush and just making sure that it's darker closer to the edge, then going with a bigger brush and hitting it a few more times to extend that gradation. Once I've put this one in place, I might observe that actually the other one is a little bit too light. I might decide to leave it like that. I might fix it. It's kind of up to you. So depending on how your study goes, as long as your form reads, I would say you're pretty much successful at doing the study. No one's really going to know or care very much whether it's off by 1% black. But anyway, I'm kind of obsessive, so I'm actually going to darken it. So two more hits. That's roughly about it. Next, we're going to do this plane here, which is barely visible. And all that you can see is just this edge here, which is picking up uh, some bounce light from the floor. So I'm going to pick up some floor value. So I'm just going to color pick the floor and 10% opacity. And I'm just going to hit that corner. I can't even see where it's supposed to be. So it's right here. I'm just going to hit that corner. And sometimes, as you can hopefully see right now, just a tiny little bit of something reveals an entire surface. So you don't need to be worried about doing too much. Your brain will be able to interpret and just fill those details in with very little input from you. So sometimes a little bit is all you need. So this one is done. I'm going to go back to the first one. because I... Nope, I'm going to ruin it. Thinking of if I want to give it some more bounce light. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, maybe. Why not? It's free. Then we're going to hop over here. We're almost at the end now. Base value is lightness again so add some darkness it's pretty much what you can take from this video if nothing else is that if you're trying to make something realistic then just add darkness it's pretty much true so here we go that's pretty much it so just a few hits got us there this one just a tiny bit of again more darkness just in the edge of it so this is only happening because of how i've set up my rendering strategy. I could have easily picked all the dark values. In fact, maybe we can do that now. So I'm going to pick a dark value, fill this entire shape, which is dark, and then we can add light. So we can put that in now. And then if you keep doing that, you can make Powerpuff Girls. Being attacked by a fly. Flies don't like art. So just lightening now instead of darkening. Essentially what we're doing is we're just building a gradation. We're adding a tone transition. So that's really what we're doing. It doesn't matter whether we go from light to dark or dark to light. All that matters is that we just have that seamless tone transition, which is what's going to just translate into realism later on. And this top one, let's add a little bit of shading again, a tiny bit. The way this works and why it works is that our light source, when it's up here on the left, it's closest to the planes that are angled parallel to it. So it's striking this at, it's striking this surface here. If we think of it in side view, if we think of this, if we can think of this inside view, go away, fly. 
recording videos. Okay, so if we think of this inside view like this, and then this is this side is here, this side is here. Our light source is over here on top, angled right at this direction. So it's most the most light rays are striking this area here. And then second most is gonna be either this or this plane. So basically light rays are then continuing on to also this side here. And if I could only extend this just by a little bit, please, sir. So if I could extend this over, light rays are striking this surface, this surface, and this surface, but this one is receiving, this one is 90 degrees, so it's receiving the most direct amount of light. These ones are glancing angles, so the more that the angle reduces, the dimmer sort of those surfaces are gonna become because they don't receive as many light rays. You can think of it like that. They're just sort of, they're not hitting it fully. They're hitting it at an angle and then bouncing out, so they're not able to go in at a direct angle. You can think of it as like impact. If you have someone throw a snowball right at your face, if it hits you right in the face, that's probably gonna be horrible. But if it just kind of like goes at your cheeks and glances off, then you can just smile and be merry and find like a big stone and throw it at their head. Um, so anyway, that's how light works and in this image. And I suppose we're pretty much done. So this was a quick overview of just working to build gradations, working to master those transitions, making a couple different decisions of when to emphasize, when to underemphasize something. Could put a little bit of shading over here because I just feel like it. And I'm going to lose that transition. I should have stopped this video five minutes ago. I'm going to leave it like this though. Please let me know if you have any questions. This is sort of the first talking demo that I'm doing. So trying to make it as good as possible to explain stuff as I'm doing it. And let me know if it worked out. Let me know if there's something that you still don't get, in which case I would love to help. So again, if you have questions, chances are that a lot of people also have those same questions and I would love to be able to answer problems and to answer real questions instead of just making stuff up out of my head. So anything that you might have for me, please send me a comment. A lot of people are gonna be grateful for that too because they'll get their problem solved as well, okay? Hoping this was good for you. Please give me a like if it didn't help you. Please share it anywhere that you think may be useful to people on forums, on DeviantArt, on President Obama's homepage, whoever. It doesn't really matter to me. Queen Elizabeth. I don't know her name. Just anywhere. I'm trying to think of Japanese kings. Anyway, just anywhere really. Share it with me. I'd love to see it. Hoping this was helpful. Goodbye.